the two hot topic horses with Mendelssohn and Justify, they might almost be kind of an all or nothing proposition for a lot of people in terms of top three, um, which leads us to our next conversation and talking about wagering strategies. How do you make money on Kentucky Derby Day? We'll start with you, Ed. Uh, you know, Audible is my top pick, but I'm not as excited about him as, oh, this is the horse I really want to win and you know, some watching and certainly the two to my right. You know, last year I was very excited about a horse in the Kentucky Derby and Classic Empire and he was a key. Audible, nowhere near that level of confidence or enthusiasm. Wagering strategy wise, yeah, you want to be right. You want to pick the winner and if Audible runs well, I want to win. But... I feel like Hoffberg, who I mentioned is my second pick at 20, 30 to 1, and Lone Sailor, the runner up in the Louisiana Derby at 30 or 40 to 1, those are the two, if they run well, can key a very big day for me. And that's how I'm approaching betting on the race. Those two, and if Blended Citizen draws in, he would be my third. Those three up and down in the super, and then be right about Audible or Mendelssohn especially, but if it comes Justify, Hoffer, Lone Sailor, I'm going to win. Yeah, I don't love Justify. I don't need to if I'm right about the long shots. Yeah. Uh, the price I would leave out completely, or the short price is Magnum Moon, who I am willing to let completely beat me. Justify won't let beat me if Hoffer or Lone Sailor run well. Okay. Dan, I know you are a fan of both vertical and horizontal um, wagering strategy, mm -hmm. so how would you kind of approach Derby or even Derby Day? Yeah, I mean, just first of all, let's, let's just talk about um, you know, betting this race in particular. Yeah. Um, for betting this race, I think it really, and for people watching, I think it depends on, on your budget, truthfully, and, and what you're looking to get out of it. If you're looking to you know, make a massive score, I mean, Ed referenced Superfectas. I generally don't mess with Superfectas. Um, I'll probably dabble a little bit, but um, just so many horses, and especially this year, as you noted, I'm having a tough time <laughs> getting rid of horses. <laughs> so um, I, I probably wouldn't mess with Superfectas. But for people, you know, watching who say, "Hey, look, my budget for the race is maybe a hundred bucks," which I'm assuming for for this panel is not that large of a budget, but you can do a lot with a hundred bucks. Um, and I think if you're looking at the race and saying I've got a hundred bucks to bet, I think you key in on one or two horses like like Ed mentioned, and and you kind of do you know, key box and your exactas where you're putting two or three horses over however many horses you know you think belong in that second spot. Trot obviously build in some value. Um, you know some of the the best hits I've seen. I mean you know it depends on the year of course, but you know, do we think so? The prevailing logic is going to be like yours, right? That the top three or four finishers are all going to be you know, under 20 to 1. Mm -hmm. But what if they aren't? What if Lone Sailor manages to, to come up and finish a second? You know, what if, um, I don't know, um, throw out any other, I mean, how Free drop Billy. Free drop Billy. What if free drop Billy rattles? I mean, then you want to have all in that second spot. And right. so I think that's where you could potentially make some money. I can't use all. You can't use all? No, not in this group. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I would hate to use seven or eight in the second spot and then... And, and have a horse come in at 60 to 1. And, and, yeah. uh, maybe, and so maybe you do this. Maybe you take your top two or three and you box those for five bucks. So again, we're in the $100 framework. You got a, a $30 ticket right there. And then you do you do one you do one with all. One, you, know, um, yeah. you know, identify one with all. And then this way you have a little bit of coverage and you back up just in case something unexpected happens. I think that's one way to approach it. Um, I will probably be trying to narrow this down to two or three horses and play big exactos with my top two or three horses. That's probably what I'll do, especially since I like Flamboy, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. um, and I like him a lot. And so, I mean, I think any combination of Flamboy first or second is going to pay a decent amount of money. So for me personally, I'm going to uh, probably play a big exacto box and, and key box with him uh, in both spots. Travis, your thoughts on um, wagering strategies and if you would do things a little bit differently? I don't. Um, I don't bet the Derby because mm -hmm. I obviously call the Derby, which is a shame because I would love to bet the Derby because I think it's by far the greatest betting race of the year. Um, and it's interesting. I think that the way to approach in the past, the way I've always attacked it is, and we were talking about this before going on the air. Inevitably, in the Superfecta. I shouldn't say inevitably, that sounds like a certainty, but there's a decent chance year in and year out in the Superfecta that long shot closers sneak in and, and grab a piece of the pie. 
We've seen from horses like Golden Soul, Commanding Curve, Dennis of Course. I mean, the list goes on and on of horses at big prices that sneak in there. And to me, finding those horses amongst twenties, amongst twenty horses, is a lot easier to do than figuring out, particularly in a year like this, of the eight main primary contenders, which one or two are the most likely winners. Mm -hmm. Where you, most people will build their ticket from the top down. If you build your ticket from the bottom up, you can actually back into a some pretty big scores, and uh, and b you can actually keep your ticket within a more reasonable budget or framework. I mean, the Derby is a dollar minimum on the Super, which makes it tough. So you have to be willing to spend some money. But this, the trifecta is 50 cents, and you can get some pretty big scores in there. Um, so for me, if I were betting the race this year, I'm looking to sneak horses like Lone Sailor, um, possibly Hofberg, because I do agree with you. I do think his price is going to go up. He, he, I think Good Magic is the wise guy horse, and that seems silly for a Breeders' Cup horse. But uh, I do think Hofberg would be an interesting contender to run underneath. Um, I might warm up a little bit more to Solomini, who I've been down on all year long. Uh, just you want a slow grinding type as every other horse in the race tries to make their move from the 5 eighths pull toward the top of the stretch. And one by one, they can't keep up where they sort of flatten out. They become slim pickings for the horse that's just going to make a one little two furlong run at the end of the race and can sneak in to get the ticket. Um, free drop Billy, maybe. I don't know if he wants to go far, combatant maybe. I think the most reliable of that group, though, is Lone Sailor and uh, maybe a little bit of soul and meaning for that sort of role. So that's how I would do it. And then at that point, you can spread a little bit on top and you can use Justify and Volk Doro and a Good Magic and a few others and you're not going to spend that much money.